Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. With me today is Ed Shehab. He has a memory health supplement that is hopefully going to take care of a lot of the nutritional issues that we have in our daily lives that affect our brain health. So thank you for joining me, Ed. Jennifer, thanks for having me. So give us a little background on you and how you decided to get involved with this necessary project. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's actually become a passion in my life. Um, Jennifer, I was not in the supplement business at all. Uh, in fact, uh, I was running a com- I run a company in the oil industry, uh, and we uh, have been running that company since the early 2000s and have been fortunate, done well with it. And um, I was uh, happy in my space. I was having lunch with my mother back uh, 2018. And unfortunately, though the conversation was delightful, it quickly dawned on me she had no idea who I was. And at that moment, uh, it was really a earth-shattering, life-altering situation for me that someone who had been there and watched us grow the company and enjoyed the successes and was there during the failures and the heartaches and all the joy that comes in life no longer even knew who I was. And who, it, for me, uh, it was just a whole cold, hard slap in the face. And and being an entrepreneur, I thought, well, I can fix this. I can do something about it. I can make it happen for her, right? Uh, And unfortunately, or fortunately, the naivety of that statement delved me into the world of research and understanding products that could work and help work. And a dear friend of mine and now partner within Memory Health had come to me and said, listen, Eddie, we have this product. We're bringing it to market. It's not commercialized yet, but I'd love to have your mother try it and see if it can help her. And I said to to him, I said, Frederick, thank you. I'm going to delve into it and really understand it because it's just the kind of mind I have. I have an inquisitive mind. I like to read and research and do those kind of things and looked at the science behind it. Clearly amazing. We can go into that in a bit, but wanted to try it with my mother. And so I gave it to my mother and we started to work down the road with her. But unfortunately, Jennifer, one of the things that's quite sad with Alzheimer's, there's a there's a window in time, there's a door. And once the patient walks through that door, they're not coming back. And for my mother, the day she had no recollection of me or the rest of my family, that day was the day she wasn't coming back. The science of memory health is really phenomenal because memory health was selected by a group of scientists to understand the effects of nutritional supplementation to the brain to help combat neurological, neurodegenerative disease issues of the brain. So they were they were t- trying to really take a look and say, is there another way for us to fight this? And so what's great about the memory health supplement is that it was chosen for the study. It wasn't a situation where uh, somebody paid to have it put into the study. And it was a double-blind, randomized, placebo-based trial in which half the group received memory health and the other half did not. They received the placebo. And the results of that were groundbreaking because what happened is we saw in the Alzheimer's patients, and this is an early onset issue, not, not people that have already gone through the door, increases in mood, memory, and cognitive function. But the real groundbreaking piece of that, that in and of itself was great, but the groundbreaking piece of that was in half of the control group of forestalling of the ongoing effects of the disease which was heralded as a a breakthrough. It was written up in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease as a glimmer of hope for Alzheimer's patients. No, memory health is not a cure, but what it is is a tool to help forestall the effects of neurodegenerative disease. And so that was really groundbreaking. And from that point, I said to Frederick, listen, uh, you've got a great product here. Um, You know, if you ever need some money to help, you know, boosted along, count me in, I'll be more than happy to help you. Never thinking that I would be actually sitting here growing the brand. Well, he's been quite successful with another product. 
I have been fortunate the oil company's done well, and I have uh, I have some time to kind of devote myself to this. And I said to him, look, we're not going really anywhere with the product. How about you let me help you build the brand? And he was welcoming to that. And so I beca- it became kind of a personal mission for me to help people avoid or potentially put off what I was faced with, with uh, that horrible reality that at that point, my mother was gone. I mean, she was there physically, but she was gone to me. Uh, and so that's that's an empty feeling. It's a heart, heart-wrenching feeling. And so it became my mission to try and bring this to as many people as possible and try and help them with this. Well, having said all that, now Memory Health has gone through four additional clinical trials. Another Alzheimer's trial confirming the results of the first a trial on mild cognitive impairment, which unfortunately is a stepping stone to neurodegenerative disease. And in that, we saw the same results, increases in memory, mood, cognitive function, and a forestalling of the ongoing effects of that. Uh, From there, it was then tested on healthy brains, because if we can help people with neurodegenerative disease, I'm sure we can help healthy people. And why do I make that statement? Because you pinged on it earlier. This product is about nutrition for the brain. And what's in it? Well, carotenoids, lutein, zeaxanthin, mesozeaxanthin, and omegas. Carotenoids are located in the brain. They're nutritional sources for the brain. Omega, that's actually the largest mass of the brain. So what this product does, it provides a supercharged, super nutrient to the brain to help those carotenoid areas and to help those omega areas areas. And people often say, well, why can't I just eat better to do that? And the the reality, unfortunately, is carotenoids are found in leafy green vegetables. They're found in peppers. They're found in ocean trout, found in egg yolk. We know omega is derived uh, from the sea as well. But the problem, unfortunately, is you just can't get enough of it anymore. You know, we always, we point to a slide that we have that says in 1953, one bowl of spinach would require you to get to eat 40 bowls today to receive the same nutritional value. Ooh, to get the bad. omega <laughs> supplementation that we have in here, you'd have to eat a, uh, you know, an ungodly amount of fish. Uh, <laughs> and so that's the problem that we have. That, yes, truly we can, we can help with our diet. And diet should be part of what we're doing, but we just can't get enough. And as a result, that's been the key and the success to this product. It helps provide this super supplement to the brain in the carotenoid centers that are located in multiple areas of the brain, as well as the omega. And that in and of itself helps provide the nourishment necessary for the brain to be functioning properly. I was not, I was of the belief that if you ate healthy, you didn't really need to like take a daily vitamin type supplement until I read, this is probably about six or seven years ago, that are basically agricultural farming, you know, the way we grow our food and our meat and all that stuff is been very engineered. And I'll get back to that in a second. And just overdoing the crops in the fields, that, like what you said, it's like ugh, 40 bowls of spinach is not my idea of a snack. <laughs> but that's that's where I kind of started going, oh, yeah, that actually makes sense. Now, I live in a town that it used to be all agricultural. Now it's a suburb of San Francisco. And we grow sweet white corn. And maybe a little less than five years ago, I read how corn 100 years ago would not resemble like what we grow now. That's what I mean by engineered. I'm not talking about GMOs or anything. Like that. It's just the natural like breeding of plants. You can tell I'm not a farmer. We do rotate the crops. So let's see, this is 20. So odd years, certain farms do tomatoes and even years they do the corn. I'm assuming they, you know, they don't do all tomatoes and all corn, I don't think, but I don't know. I just drive by on the way to and fro places. And the last thing that happened to me that convinced me that the supplementation is not just taking something that ends up getting flushed out of your system is this was 2016. So thereabouts, I went to our local health hut, which is what it's called. 
And I said, I'm of a particular age and I'm having blah. And they said, you need this plop. And they put a supplement down, all natural supplement on the counter for menopause symptoms. And I said, you didn't even let me finish saying what I had. They're like, nope, here, you need this. And there's a, it's money back guarantee if it doesn't work. I've been taking it ever since. And if I don't take this supplement, all of the negative side effects of the change come flying back. So that's what convinced me that it's not just, you know, your book. You always read, oh, your body flushes out what it doesn't need. I'm like, well, mine's, I don't think mine's flushing anything out. I, I really, truly believe, I, I believe modern life is not good for our brains. And it starts with what we're eating. Oh, uh, you know, I think you've pinged on a few points that I'd like to kind of explore with you if, if we could, because you hit on, on some really great stuff. So one of the things that I think is critically important is to really understand, to your point, what kind of supplement do I have? What is it? You know, they say it's going to do X, but what's behind it? You know, one of the things that I felt was so very important to me when I started to do the research is to really understand What's the science behind the product? Many people claim science, but in reality, they're not really claiming their science. What, what you'll see a lot of like, well, you know, our product has this and this and see, there's been a study on omegas. And so omegas are good for you. So therefore, our product is good for you as well. That's a big stretch. You know, one of the things that I constantly hang my hat on here and what got me so passionate about the product and got involved in the company is that this was selected for randomized clinical trials. This is the real deal from a science perspective. And then those results were published in uh, top flight journals by, by really high uh, H factor scientists. And that's a rating that's used. So it's really quality work. And it's not about us saying, well, carotenoids are in this product, therefore our product's good. Our product, by the way, was selected through research grants by the scientists that were doing it. We didn't pay somebody to take the product. And that was used because they felt, as you've mentioned, nutrition is a key to support brain health. And one of the things that is tragic, and we, we saw through the autopsies of people going through neurodegenerative diseases, is that their brain size had shrunk and the color of the brain had darkened. And that's really a result of Many things, but part of it's not getting proper nutrition. And then when you think about those people in that stage, I'll just think about the last year where people were really confined into you know their rooms. So they're not getting proper nutrition. So it's compounding the problem for them. But in reality, it's something, as you've pointed out, people face throughout the cycle of their life. And that was, you know, and that's really been so important to me. And why is that part of the equation? Because you take the supplement when you're in your 40s and your 50s for different reasons, perhaps, than you're going to take it when you're in your 60s and 70s. And part of that could be, as you've mentioned, brain fog uh, or as as people and a lot of a number of our clients are menopausal women basically saying this product has cleared the brain fog. I'm more on point. I can really I'm functioning better. Well, why is that? Well, it's because we're feeding the brain and we're giving the brain the nutrients that it needs. The other thing that's really important is to say, well, how do you know it gets to the brain? And I often find that, you know, I, I, I find that to be an interesting question. So it's not about just taking a product that's getting ingested through the gut. Will the product break through the blood brain barrier and get to the brain? The simple answer is for us, it's yes. And I'll tell you how we know that, but there's two reasons for that carotenoids are located in the brain. They're located in the eye. Omega, of course, we know is already in the brain. The blood-brain barrier in, in lay terms basically says, Jennifer, you take anything you want. You take ginkgo, you take XYZ, but if it's not in the brain, I'm not taking it to the brain. Your body will absorb it, but it's not going to that source that you think it's going to go to. So when the scientists were doing this analysis and this research, they wanted to make sure that they were getting proper absorption into the brain tissue. So what they did is they measured the carotenoid serum levels and omega in the macula. And why is that? Because the macula is brain tissue. And the macula is the pathway 
of communication to the brain as, as we see phenomenal. I mean, this is, I, I just love this stuff. I mean, this is really great. I, I didn't know that until I got involved. Right. So the macula so, is in your eye for the people who mac- aren't watching the video. Right. Right. The macula <laughs> is in your eye and that's brain okay. tissue. And I did not so know that they, either. Yeah. So what they did is they measured the serum levels of, of the, of the carotenoid supplementation in the eye prior to even starting it. And then what they did is they started testing and they have these great machines that can look into the, the eye and the back of the eye and the macula. And they were able to see that once they were being supplemented with memory health, the level, the serum level was not spiking in the tissue, but actually going up linearly. And so that led to the, those whole discussions. First of all, okay, we know it's breaking through the blood brain barrier, but more importantly, we're not spiking the brain. We're feeding it linearly, which is think about like filling your gas tank, right? You fill it up linearly and it's filled up. The other thing though, that came from this is when supplementation stops, guess what happens? The tank level starts to decrease. Why? Because the brain is using the supplement. It's, it's ingesting it, shall we say, within the brain to help do all the things that it's supposed to do, help you with mood, help you with memory, help you with brain fog, cognitive function. And so those are really cre- key inv- uh, issues that you need to look at. And as a consumer, they it puts a lot of responsibility on the consumer, right? But these are the things that really make a difference in the products that you take. And there's a lot of noise out there, trust me. There's a lot of products with just junk in them. And, and it's hard on the consumer. They don't know the difference, perhaps, that a white paper is not really real science. We saw a lot of um, uh, white papers generated during the COVID year. That's not really, that's not double blind, placebo based, randomized trials. That's opinion papers cloaked in science, essentially. So, so that was one of the things that was really important. And, and to your point, it's making sure we're providing the nutrition. And nutrition is important at my age. And it's important when you're 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, because we're feeding our brain throughout our life. And I think that that's really the issue here. Taking a product like Memory Health is a lifelong journey. It's not a product that you'll take today and say, well, tomorrow I remember everything. You know, it doesn't work like that. Why? Because think about what we're doing. We're filling the tank up. So the lower the tank, the more you need. And so that's that's really a, a lot of the, you know, the science and the the oomph behind our product, which separates it from really, I, I can't think of any other product in the marketplace that has five clinical trials plus one meta-analysis. And the meta-analysis took a look at seven nutritional studies, nutrition in support of brain health. They'd used two of the memory health studies. And from that, then they confirmed all the findings. And what they said in that is not only does memory health support those people uh, with neurodegenerative disease, but it helps healthy brains. And so they confirmed all that, which was another big, you know, feather in the cap for memory health. And it it garnered a lot of um, interest as a result of that. Yeah, I did not know supplements went through clinical trials. I don't think I yeah, know what they did. Yeah, you know did. what? You don't. Well, yeah. It, so, so most don't. Most never do. Right. Part of the reason for that is what's the emphasis of what you're trying to get done? Right. Are you just trying to build a pro, build a pill and sell? Okay. And the other side of it is for us. You know, fortunately for me, memory health is not about making a personal wealth for me. I've, I've been fortunate in another area of my business, but it is a passion for me and I want to get the product out and I want to sell the product and I want to help as many people as I can. And quite honestly, I would not be involved in the product had the science not supported it. And because my, my name's associated with it and I want to do better by my mother than put my name on something that's not going to work. And is she taking it now? Uh, she passed away. Oh, okay. My mom yeah. passed away was- last year. It was too late for her. Um, then that's the message, right? The message is a message of hope. The science tells us it's never too early to start. It can be too late. Like in my mother's case, she walked through the door. It really wasn't going to make much of a difference for her at that point because, you know, it's too far gone. Yeah, the brain and is too damaged. That's right. And, the, and, you know, then it rapidly progresses from there and and she passed away. So... My hope is that I can stem that for a lot of people and they don't have to go through that 
but my hope is also that I get young people to start to take it because the sooner you start taking it, the better off you're going to be. And the great news about memory health, it's all natural and there's no side effects to it, which is phenomenal in that regard. Um, and, and it, you know, my son takes it, he's an athlete and, um, I, I'm very proud of him. He's quite a ball player. He plays catcher in baseball. He, he's a quarterback in football. But unfortunately, those two positions are subjected to head trauma. Yeah, yeah and that's so. So my goal is to fortify that brain today because I know it's coming. It's impossible to play those sports without getting concussed. It's coming, and when it comes, I'm I'm building up a good war chest to help protect that brain because I know I can help people with that because. Neurodegenerative disease, unfortunately, CTE is a stepping stone to dementia. So I know I can help people with dementia. I can help people with CTE. I won't say, though, that we've gone through clinical trials on that. So here it's anecdotal, but I believe I can do that. And so that's why he takes it at the age he's taking. Well, you don't just have to do sports to get a concussion. My family, no, we, had a, we had a one-hour photo lab and a portrait studio. This is going back a ways now. This is 1996. This woman brought in a, her camera and the film had snapped off in the camera wrapped around the spindle. So the film was not in the metal canister. I think my audience is old enough to be able to figure all that out. <laughs> I know that I know I have millennials, too, and they're probably like, well, but just Google it. And I took the, the camera and a black box, which not related to airplane crashes into our dark room, opened up the camera, rolled the film into the black box, which would then put it through the film processor, dropped it on the floor, bent down and smacked my head on a stainless steel sink. And that is when I discovered that you really do see stars and Tweety Birds when you bang your head hard enough. And I have a high pain threshold. By day three of a headache where like more and more Tylenol and more and more like I was taking every painkiller and I'm like this freaking headache not going away. So I went, I called, you know, went to the doctor and I'm not really sure what they did. They didn't do any fancy scanning or any of that stuff, but they're like, oh, yeah, you have a concussion. And they gave me a prescription and they said, go home and take this. Do not take this on your way home. Which was smart for them to say, because that's what I would have done. And I would have gotten probably two thirds to three quarters of the way home when it would have kicked in. And when that medicine kicked in, I was out cold and it was crazy. And then in 2016, I flew off my bicycle and crash landed onto the pavement so hard that I cracked my helmet all the way through. Now, they claim I didn't have a concussion. I did not have the same symptoms of a concussion other than. I felt like crap and my, I was definitely had brain fog, but I think it was probably the painkillers for the broken collarbone. Fortunately, they were more than 20. Well, they were 20, almost 20 years apart. So hopefully I didn't do too much damage to my brain, but yeah, you don't have to be tackled or smacked with a baseball at 90 miles an hour to get a concussion. You can no, just bang no, your head. Um, <laughs> yeah. And my wife had a similar story in that she was in the pool with the children and they were she was throwing my little daughter in the air, you know, into the pool. And my son had this water can and hard plastic. And she turned around to grab him, not realizing she had, he had the gun and the gun barrel hit her right in the temple and immediately really did some damage there. And, and, you know, unfortunately, like many um, concussion um, sufferers, there's a lot of lingering issues with that brain flog being one of them. Sensitivity to light can be the other. And uh, I know this is going to sound like a shameless plug, but we put her on it and it's made a huge difference for her. In fact, she actually has done a testimonial uh, on that regard, basically saying, you know, the fog cleared away. One of the things that we find amazing is that we have a lot of people who take our product because of this term brain fog. And it means different things to different, but, but there really are some clinical studies behind chemo brain, which is brain fog, COVID brain, which is brain fog, the mommy brain, which is another issue of that. And time and time again, people are taking our product to fight that. And it, it and it's doing wonders for them. Why? Because, you know, you're, you're feeding your brain, you're helping your brain kind of stay active, you know, get energized, be, be on point. And when I take memory health and I take it every day, of course, but 
the thing that I noticed first and foremost was mood is better. And we saw that. And that was interesting because that traditionally is always the first thing that seems to improve on people. And it was the first thing that they um, delineated in the Alzheimer's research. And it, we know that Alzheimer's patients suffer from mood issues and that it, it has a lot to do with what's happening to them. And what they were able to really cl clinically define is this elevation in mood, right? And for me, elevation in mood was one of them, but I, I just felt more on point. I just felt more, you know, in tune with everything that I was doing. And so for me, uh, it's made a difference and, and it makes a difference. And I'm not, you know, uh, fortunately, I'm not faced with uh, dementia. So at this point, but so I'm, uh, I'm, but I, I can actually say it makes a huge difference in my day-to-day -day life. And so I know that some portion, some carotenoid center just wasn't getting what it needed. And now it's getting exactly what it needs. So to that point, do we know, or is any of the studies looked at why the first thing that changes is mood? Because I find that very interesting. That was that was one of the reasons for the, it's called menopause complex and it's just supplements. And I'm going to have to write down what's in it. I, I know what's in it, but I can't remember it off the top of my head to repeat correctly. So I won't, I won't try, but that was the thing I was like, I was, I did not have, I've never had brain fog and I didn't have brain fog after the concussion where I smacked the sink, but it was just, I was just shy of 30. So I think that had a lot to do with it. Um, but that was one of the things I asked the gal at the health hut. Now she's a significantly older adult who has only had one significant health issue that I'm aware of. She did have a heart attack, but she's still kicking. And I think she's in her nineties. So I'm like, when she recommended something and told me it would work and I could get my money back if it didn't, I trusted her. My husband being a little bit more fastidious about certain things, read the all the little tiny type in the box and he, and reads what's in it and compares it, what else we were taking and all that good stuff. But yeah, it really, it helped my mood and it helped my energy level. So I'm wondering now I'm going to have to find out what the correlating, um, whatever supplement that's like in both, because I find that very interesting that mood is affected almost first, but do they, yeah, do so, they have, so yeah, so essentially the discussion centers around getting the carotenoid supplementation up into the brain. And so the brain, which is really kind of wild, will make a determination as to where it needs it. And so uh, what we find is there are certain areas in the brain that control mood, that control uh, different sensory aspects of our life. And usually, um, you know, it's it's looking to put it there to begin with. And then, and then as these levels start to fill up, it starts to filter into other areas. One of the other things that I found amazing is we had a number of clients call us up and say, you know, I'm remembering things I had forgotten. I feel more on point, but my balance is better. And I said, well, um, I mean, that's really interesting. The, the clinical trials didn't look at that. So I called the researchers in the UK and I said, this is what we're hearing back. And they said, well, it, it makes sense because there's a carotenoid center in the cortex which controls your balance so that there's a deficiency that's being filled. The body's saying, Hey, look, I need it back here. So where you might've been a little wobbly now um, you're getting fed into the proper areas of the brain. And so it's interesting how the body kind of moves that way. Um, but we also do know that mood is usually one of the early signaling factors and it's how the body's assimilating the, the carotenoid into the very area carotenoid centers of the brain. And then it moves from there. That's interesting because when I look back to when I think my mom started showing her earliest symptoms and had she consented to being diagnosed, um, sorry, somehow I turned on Siri. There we go. Anyway, as my mom started showing what I thought was her earlier symptoms, she, her, she just seemed to be more intolerant of things, which was really interesting. Um, and it was a family business. So, you know, no, I, it's hard to know, was it just the, all the dynamics of all four of us working together, coupled with possibly the early onset Alzheimer's. And as I was saying before, I somehow woke up Siri without touching my computer. 
she did not consent to being diagnosed until she was like midway through the disease. So she's not officially did not have a diagnosis of early onset Alzheimer's, but she was diagnosed officially at 69. So that's pretty young. It is. It that is. was a long and, statement. <laughs> yes, but I, I think you get to a point that that I think is very, very important. I don't want to wait for you to start taking this product when you're 69 and faced with early onset, right? And so you, we, we really, it's my mission to 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 really educate people along the way. What's interesting to me is we know what our demographic pro- profile of who's buying our product. And it's right now the 40 to 50 year old age group that's buying our product a lot. And, and that is our largest actually demographic of purchase. And so it could go a couple of ways. It's also female, the female 40 to 50 year old. So they're buying for the household, buying for themselves. They're buying one way for their family and maybe they're buying for, for people that they're becoming caregivers for. But the point of the matter is that We really need to start sooner, not later, because what we're doing is we're building the base to help fight. And that's important. The other thing that, you know, unfortunately, we don't see it, right? We don't see the effects of oxidative stress on our bodies and our brains. We hear about it. You know, we talk about take an aspirin a day for your heart. You're under stress. We never talk about it from the brain perspective. Same thing. Brains. My partner loves to say we are writing a check you know, for the experience of life every day. And that experience is good, wonderful, bad, hard, whatever the case may be. And we're internalizing that all the time. So it's very important that we take the steps today so that tomorrow is going to be a better day for us. And it's, it's really critical. I agree. And you cannot, you cannot exercise away or take a supplement to offset a crappy diet. No, you know, it's true. I think if you take a look at it, there's, you know, there's a multiple prong approach, right? We want good exercise. We want good nutrition. The problem that we've talked about earlier is regardless of your diet, uh, I mean, I'll challenge people all day long on this. I, I really get frustrated and people say, well, you just eat better. It, does, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. You eat better is part of it, but you need the supplementation because you're not getting the nutritional value we once were getting. So yes, eat better. That's all great. But don't say eat better in lieu of proper, legitimate supplementation, because it's really a multi-prong approach. And I think that that's really key. Unfortunately, in the supplement industry, there's a lot of product that is not legitimate and it's not scientific. And one of the things we're beginning to see now, too, is what's in the supplement. You told me I had X, Y, Z in the supplement, but do I really have it? One of the things that we're making a press release on this, we were just... Uh, reviewed by an independent third party to say, okay, upon manufacturing date, by the way, our product's made in the United States, upon manufacturing date, the carotenoid formula, the omega formula that we say we have, do we have it? The answer is yes. Six months down the road, the carotenoid formula is still there in the exact proportions that we have. And a year now down the road, it's still the same, which is critical. Because one of the last things we want to do is buy a product has been on the shelf two months and realize the bioavailability of that product is useless. It, it doesn't exist. And trust me, that's out there a lot. So I say to the consumer, here's a couple of things. I'm going to put it on you. I'm going to try and make it easier for you because I know memory health's already gone through all this. But think about this in all your supplements. What's the science behind it? Is it real? Has the product been researched? Not internal white paper. Has it gone to the steps like a clinical a uh, double blind placebo based trial what's in the product does anybody said memory health product has 1010 carotenoid in it and it's got omega 3s and now in supplement certified has put the seal of approval on our product say so yes indeed it does have that does the other product have that how was it created you know that's the other thing most often powder supplementation in a capsule that's put together has an air leak in it. So it's automatically going to start to degrade. It's a question about how soon you're taking the product versus when it was produced. Our product is created in a gelatin capsule here in the United States. The carotenoids are organically grown. Um, the, The omegas are sourced from the coldest waters of the North Sea in relatively small fish. We don't use large fish. That's very important to the quality of the omega. And then it's all created here in the United States. 
and it's suspended in vitamin E oil. So it's a gelatin capsule over vitamin E oil. That's part of the reasons why the bioavailable availability of the product is really good from the day I, I build it to two to three years out because nothing can get into it. It's impervious to light and impervious to air. These are all things that you should be looking at, regardless if you take memory health or not. These are just things that I think people, people should consider. But when you're taking a product for something as scary as neurodegenerative disease, make sure you're taking the real thing because that's so important. That makes sense. Now I want to throw out two sciencey questions at you. The first, can you explain because I've I've gone th- I've had enough conversations about carotenoids in the brain that I generally think I understand it, but for those people that might be new to the podcast, like do we know what they do in the brain or we just know they're there? No, we we do know. They're they're basically receptors nutritional receptors within the brain itself, right? Um, And they provide substance to the brain. If you think about carotenoids, they're found in leafy green vegetables, green pepper, red pepper. And what are they doing? Well, they're there for the vegetable to use as substance. And then that's what happens. That's why you get the coloration that you do in those plants. It's the same thing with our brain. They're there as kind of nutritional sources within the brain. Yeah, same thing with omega. And so as a result, if they're not getting what they need, they can only put out so much, right? And and as a result, then they start, basically, if you think about it, the tank starts to lower in um, the gas level. And as a result, we need to help give them more. And so it goes into those areas. And the great thing about the brain, it's basically saying, I don't need it in the frontal lobe, I need it in the cortex. So we're going to take it back to the cortex. So that's really, they're super substances, we like to call them, and they're super antioxidants. So they're, they're really there to help feed the brain, heal the brain. And um, that's what we're doing with it. Well, for somebody like me that cannot stand fish, and has a family history of Alzheimer's, those two factors of my life are not, they're not very good together. I'm very happy about there's more and more things like what you're, you're producing. They're, they're, they're looking at that a lot more. Yes. Brain and health. One of things, right. One mm-hmm. of the and I had one more that. question too. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, you said the, we keep talking about the dark leafy greens. My husband is on blood thinners, the newer version, not the warfarin where you have to have your blood tested every month. And have they tested these things on people who are on that kind of medication? Because he needs to be on this stuff. Well, the short answer is no. The bigger answer is that um, it's not just dark leafy greens. It's all leafy green vegetables and it's orange and red peppers. And to this date, uh, in fact, we know we have no negative side effects to the product. Because essentially what happens if your tank is full, the body's not, there's, it just gets passed. So that's the great thing about it. I will also say to you that we have had pregnant women taking our product because what they want to do is feed the brains of their unborn children because they're, whatever they're ingesting, it's passing through as food. And that's why they have done it. So our belief clearly is that we're, you know, we're helping from the very youngest ages all the way to the, the nth degree. But more importantly, we are providing a safe product for people to take. That makes sense to take it when you're pregnant because that's when their brain is developing. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, <laughs> it's key. It's key. And we know it, it, it gets there and we know we're helping across the board. So, uh, and we're helping mommy after mommy um, has that little one because we know sleep and um, demands on time are great. And so we, uh, we know that we're helping them because again, and that's the other thing that we, we should talk about, right? We talked about exercise. We've talked about diet. We clearly believe that you need a, a proper nutritional supplement, but you also need good sleep. And, and there's, that's how the body heals. And unfortunately for us, many people are not sleeping well. There's a lot going on. That oxidative stress is all part of it, and it's all attacking our body. So we need to really take good care in that regard. I always have a good antidote for how important sleep is. It only takes one bad night of sleep, and I will wake up. And my brain will be like, yo, let's have a donut for breakfast. How about some Danish? It's all garbage sugar. My brain is like, feed me garbage sugar, feed me garbage sugar. And it's like, no, 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 no. We're going to have a healthy breakfast. 
And hopefully it's you. I usually get a crappy night's sleep the day, night before I've got like a really busy day and can't take a nap in the middle of the day. But that's generally like eat healthy, do a workout. Maybe it might have to be a little less intense than planned. And then maybe take a nap at like one or two o'clock in the afternoon, just 20, 30 minutes. But eating a pastry or a donut for breakfast, not going to fix the, the no. tired. No, <laughs> but it's, in fact, and what do we know about that? We spike sugar. And when we spike sugar, you crash, right? And and that's one of the big fallacies with a lot of brain supplements is that they include caffeine in their product. And why is that? Well, because they want you to think it's working right away. When in reality, you're going to get a caffeine crash off it. Caffeine is not the basis of healing the brain or feeding the brain. It's just a jolting mechanism. You know, and that's one of the things that we always talk about with memory health is that you're not taking this pill today and tomorrow the whole world is going to be different. It's, it's a journey. You understand that the clinical trials took place over 16 months. So you're building every day. But I know that it's going to make a difference for you. May not in within the first 30, 60, 90. We've had people say, you know, this is my sixth month. And I'm now beginning to see the difference. And that all has to do with what is the state of your brain? What's going on there? How, you know, how is it set up as it relates to uh, it's carotenoid and omega supplementation. What's the stress level you've been under? Um, and like you, you know, I, I was training for a triathlon and um, uh, I was on my tri bike up on the aero bars and I'd been grinding miles out and I was getting kind of bored and I, I lost my concentration and I hit a piece of separated concrete and I went flying up into the air and I came down on my head and I was knocked out. And when I came to... <laughs> I saw this little old lady with white hair standing over me and the sun was behind her. And my first words were, you're not God, are you? Because <laughs> this is like, I didn't realize this was you. And she said, no, 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 no. I saw you fly off your bike. I thought I was going to help you. So that's so I know funny. I've been and so that's part of the reason why I take memory health today. So, uh, but uh, at first I thought maybe I had bought the full ticket. So <laughs> it was kind of funny. Yeah, I knocked myself out as well. And when I came to, um, well, I don't remember a lot of what happened that day, which is probably a very big blessing. Um, I don't remember my husband showing up. My friend, I was with my friends, thankfully. My friend took my phone, called my husband. He got there in rapid time. Thankfully, no cops were behind him. <laughs> and I was on the gurney. I look over and I tell him I'm fine. I think I dislocated my shoulder only if that were only the case. And we chatted for a second. This is according to my husband. I don't remember this. I turn, I look at my friend and I say, Nancy, when is John going to get here? Now, had the paramedics heard that, I would have gotten airlifted to the trauma center, which I didn't really need. But, you know, because I'm fine. Brain is fine. I don't get brain fog. I get good night's sleep. I exercise, all that good stuff. But it was it was just a very interesting experience to have lived through. So I could I didn't have any temporary God sightings, though. That was funny. <laughs> I kind of yeah. wish that would have happened. That would have been funny. Well, but... unfortunately, it wasn't. It wasn't God. So I lucked out on that one. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but when I see adults, especially adults with their kids, so the kids are wearing bicycle helmets, the adults are not. There's I wish I had I should have taken a picture. It was really hard to see that the helmet was cracked all the way through. And well, I tell yeah. people that. I'm like, what hit the ground first was my shoulder, which is why I broke my collarbone and it split into a V and it was almost an inch apart, the two pieces. That wasn't fun. So now I have a nice metal plate that acts up in the weather when we ever have weather again in California. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, it's like, had my head hit first like yours, I can only imagine. Or if I had not been wearing a helmet, I would well, either be dead or brain damaged. There's yeah, no way. In fact, I, I wrote a letter to the manufacturer of the helmet. It was a full carbon fiber uh, kind of racing helmet in it. It dissipated the energy completely. And it, the whole helmet was shattered when I got up. I mean, it was completely destroyed. But it did what it was supposed to do. Um, and it protected me from having a traumatic head injury. Like you, I suffered a... Um, green stick fracture of my collarbone, a ton of road rash. And uh, uh, these are the things we live through. But that was a check that I wrote that day. I know my head was, my brain was impacted by that uh, because when you're concussed, that's what happens. Your brain gets 
moved quickly in your in your uh, skull and it creates a, a bruise. So that's all part of the reason why I continue with my regimen every day of, of memory health. And, and I think it can help a lot of people. And, you know, sadly, we see all the time, for example, uh, former professional athletes who have suffered now from CTE and take their own life. And, and that's tragic. You know, concussions lead to mood issues. I mean, they get into very dark places because they're not, they can't just, they can't get right. They can't, you know, there's light is sensitive, sensitive to them and mood and memory loss. I can help, you know, I know I can help, you know, and, and one of the things I'd like to see, and as we move forward is some clinical trials done on CTE with memory health. Ideally, we would rather have grants because it, 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 it makes for more of an independent research but I, you know, it's a passion of mine. As I said, my son's an athlete. I used to be an athlete. I, I don't claim to be one anymore. <laughs> and I, I know I, I can help people across different spectrums with, with, um, you know, potential uh, neurodegenerative disease. And so that's key. And I am also proud to tell you this. I want you to understand it again. Um, it really shows the science. Memory health was granted two treatment patents, not. Our patent, our formula is patented. Many people can claim that. But we received a patent in the UK uh, first for the prevention and treatment of neurodegenerative disease. And then last year, uh, December, we received a patent here in the United States for the prevention and treatment of neurodegenerative disease. That's huge because what happens is your science is all reviewed and the claims are then validated and you know constantly put up to to scrutiny to say, can we really do this? And we receive that again, very, I don't know any supplement that has a treatment patent. So the point of the matter is what I'm, I'm really trying to say is as a consumer, think about all the things we've talked about in this area and take a look at what you're taking and make sure the science is real, make sure what's in it has been independently verified and take a look at how, how the community, medical community in general reviews and looks at your product. No, that makes perfectly good sense. And I've talked to some researchers, some neurologists, et cetera, about the new Alzheimer's treatment drug that's got tons of controversy around it. And all three of them that I've talked to, I realize that's not super scientific, believe that that drug will lead to other potential treatments and that we're going to probably end up with some sort of cocktail that it's not going to be a pill we take or this or that, but it's going to be, it's going to be a whole treatment package. And I bet I, I, I am not easily going to be not, let's see, that's a double negative. It's going to take a lot to convince me that nutrition is not a huge factor. My mom had a horrible diet. So yeah, I, well, I, I do believe in that. And, you know, um, I will say this, um, understand that that drug it basically got the emergency pathway the way the COVID drugs have done. So like the COVID drugs, and a lot of people don't realize this, but they're still in clinical trials. And COVID vaccines are still in clinical trials. Everybody gets a shot as part of uh, the clinical yeah, trial, whether they giant do it or not. clinical trial. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the same thing with that product. One of the reasons why is the pharma product has failed consistently is they try and take a look at the result, but don't do anything to, to get to blocking the result. And that's kind of where we're at. We're not talking about the result because the result's there. And we know that, you know, trying to do something with chemical to, to reverse it at that point may be way too late. And that's why most of the pharma trials have failed. The point of this is I'm trying to do something before we want to look at the affected tissue and do something about it today before it gets to a point where we can't correct it. And I think that that's, that's the other side of it. And this, you know, they've used the emergency pathway on it and it's, it's, it's still in clinical trials and they don't really have any definitive results yet. I hope, I hope I'm suspicious, but I hope um, because, you know, anything I can be a part of to help people in that regard that, you know, it's good news. My other concerns are, you know, they're talking about dosage rates anywhere from five thousand to fifty thousand dollars a dose. I, I, I don't, I don't know how that's really going to work out. So we'll have to see. Um, but we, what the news today is, we can do something a lot cheaper than that uh, to help fight that fight today. And you don't have to sit in a chair and have an infusion for an hour. No, it's true. That's true. It's like and, I kind of equate it to like sunscreen. We could put sunscreen on now, avoid the sunburn, 
that might turn into skin cancer later, or we can just we can just wing it because they can cure skin cancer, right? No. It's like Well, you know, and one of the things we talk about, I mean, to your point, we say it's not a cure, but it's a forestalling. So the idea is let's forestall, let's push that door out as far as possible. Because to your point, maybe it is a cocktail in the future that works, right? Um uh, but we got to get there and, and and we're still a ways off. So let's do everything we can today to push it out, but also make our journey better every day. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I often say in, in interviews that we are social people. We don't, we don't do well when we're isolated. It's all about interaction. It's all about creating memories, experiential. That's what our lives are about. So let's make sure that we're doing the things to, to benefit by that today and understand and remember our, our experiences throughout life at the end of our life while we're living our life. And that's, that's all key. The last thing we want to do is not have the abilities to really function and, and understand the lives that we've led. I mean, look at Ronald Reagan, he's president of the United States. And at the end of his life, he had no idea that that was part of who he was. Right. Same thing with my mother. You know, there's a photograph that we use. She's holding me as an infant. Um, and then we had this journey together and in her last moments, I was holding her that it's amazing that, you know, the circle of life, it all went that way. And, and, but she had no idea what we had been through together. And that's, that to me is a book that needs to be written for people to remember, right. Not to be shut out. in. And, and so our life stories are important. Um, uh, my, my eight-year-old's life stories, my daughter, my son, who's older, we, we all want to benefit by that along the walk of our life. Yeah, I'd like to be like my paternal grandmother who passed away this past April at 103. Her mind was mostly fine. She was good up until she was 102. She was mostly blind from glaucoma. And then in the last two and a half years of her life, was very hard of hearing, which frustrated me that she didn't do something to fix that. I don't understand that because being unable to see most things and unable to hear most things to me is like solitary confinement in your brain. And I don't want to do that. That sounds terrifying to me, but you know, she lived to be a hundred doing pretty dang good. And so that's my goal. So where can people find memory health so that they can get going on this and don't fall mm-hmm. off your bike and smash your head into the no, ground right. and mm-hmm. take memory health. <laughs> well, thank you for asking. Uh, you can go to our website, memoryhealth.com. It's okay. pretty easy. Yes, I can uh, remember that. <laughs> yes, and we we are direct to consumer. Uh, it's, it's part of our strategy. Uh, and we want you to come to our website. And uh, there's a whole bunch of science for you to wa- read. There are different... Um, videos of the clinical researchers who were interviewed when this was first announced. Uh, plus, you can either buy buy the box or subscription, and that's really the most economic way to do it. And, and once you do that, you're part of the Memory Health family, and we check in on you and see how your journeys are going. And it's, it's really important. And um, it's, uh, you know, it is a passion of mine. And then so uh, I hope to help a lot of people. I want to avoid, help people avoid what I went through and and I also want to protect you along the way. And I think we can do that with memory health. I don't disagree. This has been fantastic. And I appreciate that you guys reached out to me so I could learn more about you. Well, Jennifer, thank you for having us uh, and having me on the show. And I appreciate it. And memory health, um, thanks you. And, and I'm sure the people that are part of your audience, if all I've done is spiked some thought process for them as it relates to not only memory health, but how they look at their supplements. It's been a good day to do that. So I'm glad for that. And I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.